What is good, Defenders? That's right. I'm here, the mouth of the South Bay, sitting in front of my scarf for all. I'm your girl, not the scarf, Nina. And of course, joining me from Philomonster Studios is my girl, Panda. Hello, Los Angeles. Hello, fans of Major League Soccer. Hello, lovers of the beautiful game. And of course, hello to the millions and millions of defenders of the bank listeners this is episode 248 and like she said i am amanda the panda Philemon. i'm your long blonde haired flamingo who's gonna be uh, running you through this episode today and you are in the right place so if you thought for a second that this sounded a little different than what you're used to well you are correct so do not adjust your tv sets do not Change the channel in your car, wherever you're listening to this, because this is Defenders of the Bank 2.0, because, well, much like LAFC in tonight's match, who is kind of going through some heavy squad rotation, we decided we were going to uh, rotate our squad a little bit to kind of prevent some mental and physical fatigue from All of the games that we have been having go on recently between CCL, between the Open Cup, between regular MLS season. We've got a lot going on. So why not give the boys a night off the same way that Steve gave our squad the night off as well? What do you think? Let's be honest. It's an improvement right here. You've got us, the Angel City Chicks, coming to you, taking over Defenders of the Bank. We got JR in Boston. It's like what, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. for him. We got Philly tied up in the closet. You don't need them. You've got some good hands to take care of you. We're going to take you through this matchup. And unlike the boys, we're not going to dilly-dally around. We know this was a 120-minute match. Oh, my gosh, going into PK's chaos this match is going to bring you. So we are going to actually jump right in. But before we do, we have an important piece of news to give you, and that is a reschedule coming to you from LAFC. LAFC PR announcing today that the club's regular season contest against St. Louis City at BMO, which was originally slated for May 31st, which we know we will not be in the country, then (laughs) is actually going to be rescheduled for July 12th at 7.30 p.m. And for those of you who think your calendars are going to automatically update like they used to, Stanza isn't doing that anymore. So make sure you get on that. Change that in your calendar. Get your time off of work. Yes, yes, yes. So exciting. Such a great matchup that we cannot wait to talk to you all about. But, you know, first I just want to kind of talk a little bit about this match um, and like who we're playing, why things are the way they are, kind of bring everybody up to speed about why this match looked a little different than what we really are used to. Um, We all know this is the Open Cup um, and we, we kind of we know what the open cup is about it. it, I know um, Philly and scarf kind of did like a nice, nice deep dive into, yeah, they went all the way. And believe me, I made the slides for that. So I dove with them as well. And they kind of went into Monterey Bay, who they are, who's on their squad. And it just kind of gave us all an idea that we probably should not sleep on this team. This team is very stacked. Um, There's a lot of ties to LAFC. Um, There are a lot of really cool things to learn about this team and the Open Cup in general. So if you haven't listened to that episode, it might be fun to stop right now, go back, listen to that, get a good kind of base of information about what happened tonight and why this was kind of a, a really cool match to watch. But again, it looked different, Nina. And why do you think that we had no first team starters on this squad and why we were heavily, heavily LAFC two in it tonight. Well, in addition to, you know, wanting to get these LAFC, LAFC two players, additional playing time and get them out and get them experienced. You know, this stadium that we're away at for Monterey Bay is turf and that we know can cause a lot of injuries. And in addition to that, we got some big, important games coming up here. You know, we've got a cup on the line. This is not a game that I want to risk at all on to advance to the round of 16 you know this is important yes but CONCACAF will always prevail for me and this right here there it is Leo that is right we got Leon coming up and I want all eyes on that prize so LAFC 2 getting a lot of call-ups here 
And we saw eight teenagers starting for LAFC actually here in this roster. And we know, of course, Monterey Bay coming via a beating San Jose, which is epic. I always oh. love to see those teams rise through the Open Cup. But who doesn't also love really a like good when we shut them set. down? Who doesn't love a good cup set? And, you know, this kind of a little bit about San Jose. Obviously, you know, we just played them and and we lost. And a big part of that, like we said, was because of that mental and physical fatigue that Steve kind of alluded to in the press conference. So, you know, in my head, whenever people are out there and saying, like, I saw tweets from from, uh, you know, analysts and those from Monterey going, you know, oh, this is you know, put a little, dis you know, this is a little disrespectful that they want to come in here and, and with their second team, you know, against us, like, we're good. Why are you going to sleep on us? I'm like, honestly, I don't know that our physically and mentally tired team that we saw play San Jose was that much better than this hungry, fresh legged group of guys we saw tonight. When you look back mm -hmm. in retrospect, I know going into it, you think one thing, but you look back and you think about somebody like Steve, he's the one that sees these players every day. He's the one that knows what they're going through. He's the one that, you know, it's almost like social media when we, we only see like the bright and pretty and shiny and goodness out there. We don't see the behind the scenes. So, you know, we've Absolutely. trusted in him for a whole season, we trusted in him and look what it got us. And I felt like today shouldn't have been any different. We need to trust the process that coming into this matchup, he was making the best decision for everyone involved. And no, I don't think he went into this match saying, you know, oh, the cup doesn't matter or, you know, like, eh, we don't no. need to take this seriously. No, honestly, I mean, what I, what I do think is important with the cup is that it is a piece of hardware that we have not won yet. So I think, you know, when you look at the rankings of the different um, hardware with MLS Cup, Supporter Shield, CCL, Open Cup, Leagues Cup, whatever, um, I, I think when you prioritize those, you almost have to do it um, based on like where you're at, what you have won. Like we've won MLS Cup and Supporter mm -hmm. Shield, and it would be fun to add that one to our trophy. I mean, it is very hard Absolutely. to go well, in. In addition to that, you know, for those of you who also follow us on the Angel City Tricks podcast, we actually were talking earlier today in our episode about injuries for players because they're not being rested well. And, you know, there is a women's team who had three players out with ACL tears all yeah. at the same time. And that's because they're not resting. They're playing on turf and things like that. So you do have to take that into account here as well. You know, it's very taxing on the body. And with a game like this that goes into extra time, is that really something you want to put a player through right before – uh, they have a big competition, a final match, you yeah. know, it's I mean, not I, yeah, I mean, these are all valid points. And, you know, I, I read everything out there on Twitter. I love going out there and just seeing what people have to say about it. And <laughs> I love how it starts one narrative. And then all of a sudden these boys obviously come through and they're like, oh, my God, they're amazing. And we're like, oh, yeah, I take Sweet. it back. Steve sees that he knows they're already incredible and he's coaching them. And, you know, like this whole narrative of, you know, coming into this LAFC two has, has not done well. I mean, they, they have, they're at the bottom of the table. They've only scored, I think two goals on the season, but they're also very kind of likened to how the Vegas lights were, where they really haven't had a chance to gel as a team. They haven't really had a, a solid lineup that's coming out game in and game out and being able to really get some consistency. Mm -hmm. And they're also not coached by Steve. So I have to say, you know, like being coached by him and what he sees and everything, if that was a big factor in tonight and the result that they got. So let's dive into this game. Let's stop just messing around and, you know, teasing it. Let's get into these rosters. So we know we've got a lot of LEFC two players starting out here on this starting lineup. In goal, we had number one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. No, you are not supposed. How did you get out of the closet? I thought you used the duck. I tape. can't. What can I say? I just simply like rolled right on out of the closet. Uh, this hijacking, I have to say, for the last nine minutes yeah. and 30 seconds. Has been we were trying to give successful. you a break. We were trying well, to give I you mean, a break. Deal. I, I love what I do because I've got a responsibility too. But I have to say, you girls are doing a phenomenal job. Let us for a moment hop in our time machines, our DeLoreans, and go back to episode 14 of Defenders of the Bank, which was recorded on March the 25th of 2019. The reason why I'm going to that date, do either of you have an idea? Was that our first uh, pod together? 
<laughs> JR, the scarf, happened to take a class trip to Machu Picchu. Whoa to him. Whoa, whoa to him. And back then, when we were starting out, we were just two knuckleheads. I mean, we still are two knuckleheads at the end still of the day. Still two knuckleheads. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> That was the first episode that we ever had that cracked over a thousand downloads. The very, very first one, not episodes one through 13, the one with the both of you on it. And we always jokingly would say, JR, you're fired, bro. Like we couldn't hit a thousand downloads <laughs> with you. We hit it with the girls. And then you all went off and did a lot of successful things on your own, right? With center mid chicks and now angel city chicks. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be tremendous fun. I love your insights. I love the concept that you mentioned about turf panda. I love the fact that you referred to people on Twitter going meh to the LAFC two boys and, and people would have every right to the team hadn't won a single game all season long. You said it. They only scored two goals. Uh, they've let, but they've only let in seven in six mm -hmm. games. They've only let in seven. So despite the fact that they've got zero wins, four losses and two ties, there's things to be hopeful for. And boy, was there a lot to be hopeful for today. Like you were saying, Nina, let's get into the starting lineups. Yeah, I mean, since you escaped from the closet, do you want to do this rundown, Christian? I uh, I, I certainly can. Uh, I mean, we could get in and start with Monterey Bay FC. You had already mentioned the fact that they come here by way of beating San Jose one to nothing. And that was a very monumental win for that club. Their head coach, Frank Yallop, won the MLS Cup with the San Jose Earthquakes in 2001 and 2003. And this team, this Monterey Bay team, is brand new. It is a reincarnation of Fresno FC. So it's very cool that they defeated uh, a team that a lot of people within this organization had previous ties to. And that being it said, they, uh, they had a veteran squad, a much older squad than the eight teenagers that we started. Uh, in between the pipes, they had Anthony Ziaha, a six foot five Cameroonian who came in by way of the San Diego Loyal and the major arena soccer leagues, San Diego Soccers. You had Boo. Walter Martin. Oh, sorry. I couldn't. No, you're, you're going right about that. I, I boo the San Diego Soccers all you want. We're Empire <laughs> Strikes. <laughs> and just got access to the buttons. I want to hear all that stuff. We got to give a shout out to our original sponsor at one point. Oh, and by the way, we want to thank our sponsor. That's something that we forgot to mention. We are proudly sponsored by Flex Power Tools. Get Flex. It pays. Um, <laughs> Walmer Martinez, the club's first ever signing. 19 caps with El Salvador, a player to watch out for. Novello Yoseki came up through the Montreal Impact. I don't recall the exact years, but good possibility he may have come up with Maxime Crepeau. You got Kai Green, who's wearing the captain's armband, the former Seton Hall Pirate, spent his entire career within USL, formerly a league defensive player of the year. Maury Doner, he's played the majority of his career in Canada. You got Moby Fair with the Portland Timbers in 2013, 39 games with the Las Vegas Lights, so he's got some ties. Speaking of ties, I'm looking to the right of your shoulder, Nina, Borussia Dortmund. I bring that up because James Murphy – of Monterey Bay FC, the defender, played for LAFC back in 2018. The only game he managed to get any kind of playing time was the friendly against? Uh, Borussia Dortmund. Hey, there you go. You're paying attention. Jose <laughs> Enriquez. Then we got Alex Dixon. First hat trick in club history. Adrian Rebelor, a product of Cal State University, Monterey Bay. Go Otters. I bring that up because the game was played on the campus of Cal State University, Monterey Bay. Then you had Christian Valeski, who had two assists in this game. A hell of a game. The 2015 MLS Combine MVP gets picked up by the Portland Timbers, but does not sign. This is a veteran squad going up against a very young LAFC team. Very young, but not lacking in talent, as this will prove to be. Uh, we know we've got three players over the age of 19, and <laughs> within that, you know, just some strong talent and people who aren't necessarily um new to LAFC either we did see a lot of our LAFC academy team players making their starts in this game yeah do you want me to go over the roster uh for uh who started for us get it girl all right so as you had mentioned we had eight teenagers um one of those was not Eldon uh, oh gosh I'm gonna say his name wrong again I, we talked about this 
Yakupovich. I keep wanting to say Jakupovich. I don't know why. Maybe that's just feels like it rolls off the tongue better. But either way, we got Eldon in goal. Uh, we've got Noah Dolan. 38-year-old Eldon in goal. 38-year-old <laughs> Eldon. Yeah. Okay. Do we take offense to the fact that every time he did something, they were like, oh, and he's 38-year-old. He's still doing things. <laughs> like, he's not decrepit. Like, he no, but I venture to guess. I know Ricky Lopez Espin, the color commentator. On the uh, on the broadcast, he's 27 years old. He has some LAFC ties as well. We picked him up in 2019 during like the supplemental uh, the waiver draft when the uh, the Real Salt Lake released him. We didn't keep him, but these guys kept referring to the fact that he was 38. Probably as a knock on them because they were substantially younger than Eldon, and yet they're calling games, whereas Eldon's killing it and succeeding in games. <laughs> well. Either way, speaking of those that are not teenagers, we've also got the, uh, what is he, six foot seven? Is that what you said? Noah Dollenmeyer? Six foot six? Noah Dollenmeyer. Great cookies. That's Facts. right. Had, you, where'd, you, where'd you have the cookies? At was the that LAFC the, two game. That's right. You sat next to his mom. Uh -huh. Gosh, you're so nice. lucky. Um, and Great. all right. And then you're going to have some more familiar names coming up, of course. Uh, we've got Eric Duenas, uh, Christopher Jaime, Daniel Chrysostomo. <laughs> I, did we butcher that one yet? <laughs> did I say it right? Uh, Nathan Ordaz, uh, Jeremy Rodriguez. Uh, is it, we've got Romero. I, I don't want to say his first name wrong. Is it Calvin? Yes. Roll, roll with it. You can roll with Romero. That's fine. Not asking. Abraham not... Romero. It's important to say. Exactly. Okay, so not Abraham Romero. Diego Rosales, uh, Yekesa, Yekesan Suba, and Christian Torres. So definitely some names there that we are familiar with, but some that, unless you have been watching these LAFC 2 matches, you probably have not heard of them. But that is probably no longer after tonight's matchup, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And I will plug this all day. LAFC two matches are fun. You got to get out to Fullerton. You got to get out to Titan Stadium. These are a good time. You know, we've got a lot of uh, fans showing up from the 3252 doing chants and cheers the whole time. And I'm sorry, how often do you get to sit in the same stadium, sit in the stands as like a first team player or one of the coaches and watch the game with them? Like, it's just cool and it's good. Yeah. And I bet this right here is going to make people want to show up to those games even more now seeing these guys, seeing that they do have this talent. And, you know, you you know that these players are probably going to be at a top or, or like an upper level at some point, whether, you know, playing, you know, with MLS first team or another MLS team at some point. So, you know, being able to get close up to these players and, and watch them, I think uh, this is only going to help people want to show up to these games. No, Absolutely. I, I completely so, agree. <laughs> so I'm Let's glad you, I'm glad you chimed in. I don't know when you're chiming in. I don't know if you're going to hop back in the closet. I don't know if you're just going to bail on it. I don't know what's going to happen with you over there. You, uh, well, it's your show. I'm the guest today. Uh, but I hope there's another special guest that usually hangs out in that room, Panda, that might need to make an appearance at some point. Hopefully we get to see this third female on today's show. But a couple of one quick thing I wanted to mention, though, before we get into the game. This roster of 18 people that Steve brought up to Monterey Bay features seven players that have been in LAFC, the main team's 18. And I'm talking about Eldon Yakupovich, who had played one game. Noah Dollenmeyer signed and played a couple of games. Not played, but featured in the 18. Eric Duenas, who even got a start, is another player. We got da Daniel Kisostomo, another. He got a lot of playing time during that 2020 season. Nathan mm -hmm. Ordaz, featured in the 18. Christian Torres, featured in the 18 and not gotten any minutes, but Abraham Romero, today's backup keeper, another player that is featured in the 18 for LAFC. Seven players out of the 18 on the main roster. Now, 11 of the rest of the players, all LAFC too. And the crazy thing is, if you look at the average age of the 11 players that have only played for LAFC two, the average age is 18.5. 18 and a half years of age is the average age of the 11 players who did not feature at LAFC2. Now, I didn't do all the math with Eldon Yakupovich in there. I know Abraham Romero's 25, Noah Dollenmeyer's 23. We'll just round that out to an average age of 24. Eldon really breaks the curve on this. But a very young, inexperienced, winless LAFC2 team was tasked with going up to the campus of Cal State University Monterey Bay 
uh, to play a team that just beat an MLS Cup team? How would that end? Well, we're definitely going to tell you how that ends, but first we've got to tell you how it starts. And we're going to get right into it. Of course, this game being played at Cardinal Stadium there, like you said, on the campus, they sold 6,500 tickets to this matchup. And you know there were a bunch of people there probably hoping to see a lot of those first-team players from LAFC, but, you know, Sadly, they did not make the trip, So, but they did not leave, at least not disappointed when it comes to action. We'll just say that. Maybe the results, Absolutely. but they definitely were entertained. So let's hop right into it. Things kind of get kicked off pretty early on in the fourth minute. We're going to see Nathan Ordaz. He's going to get the first attempt, but that's going to lead right to a goal kick. And we're going to see a monster goal kick by Siaha, which I would expect nothing less. He is he is a giant there in between the pipes. Um, and that's going to lead to a quick counter by LAFC in the fifth minute. Ordaz, he is on the run, but he gets called offside, unfortunately. Yeah, and then in the sixth minute, Enriquez gets a clean look at Jacopo. Jacob- oh, now you got me doing it Jack- wrong. Jacobovich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Djokovic, but it's easy <laughs> save for Eldon. And then in the eighth minute, Donner, and I swear to God, this name is going to haunt me in my dreams. This boy is doing things. Great ball movement and dribbling. He's earning a corner kick. He took a throw, but that gets called back. Ugh. And then we're going to see some good defense there in the 10th minute by Dolan Meyer. And then we're going to see a corner again for Monterey Bay. Murphy, he takes it, but thankfully it is broken up. And that would be a big trend for corner kicks for Monterey Bay. Now in the 12th yeah, minute, well, we're going to see. I'm sorry. No, sorry. Continue. I, I love hearing the sound of your melodious voice. <laughs> well, then why did you stop me from talking if you like to hear it so much? I'm going to put the duct tape back over your mouth unless you uh, you need to raise your hand to speak now that there are three of us, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm more better than argue Actually, with... Actually, raise a kitty. Find a kitty. Three. Pull the kitty when you would like to speak. Yes, please gr- put, hold up one of the gremlins when you would like to speak, please, sir. Thank you. They're terrified. <laughs> All they have right. no clue what's going on. They've never seen anybody podcast from the stinking bedroom before. Oh, it sounds like your problem, not ours. In the 12th minute, uh, Suba with a great look and a great shot uh, saved by the six foot six Siaha. It was a nice look by the youngster and such a good shot. Uh, Dwayne just had a great pass into this. And then we're going to see in the 17th minute, we're going to see a corner for Chrysostomo. It's going to lead to another corner. And then uh, it, there's just corners all over. Got and then the third quarter. And, you know, Chris Ostomo's definitely taken this role of being the set piece person, not only for LAFC two, but within this game, we saw him lining up for a lot of these kicks, which interestingly enough, gives the keeper a lot of time to study the body language of Chris Ostomo and to see how he's going to line up to take these shots. And unfortunately, Chris Ostomo's third corner, still no good result there. But the 25th minute, I think we should, Philly, would you like to speak for the 25th minute? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in on that. At this point, we're seeing Monterey Bay with the lion's share of possession. Didn't expect the young LAFC2 team to dominate within that statistical category. But they were sitting back lurking, and then they countered on a sloppy ball by Monterey Bay. You had a leap over by Christopher Jaime, who connects with Christian Torres on the run, who skirts that sucker right by Anthony Siaha. And we're all shocked, stunned, flabbergasted, if you will, that LAFC went up one to nothing. The way I felt on that goal, the way I felt going into this game was literally the same way I felt in the club's very first game in Seattle, a game in which you were at, Nina, with JR. The reason why I felt that way is because you didn't know what to expect. Didn't know what to expect back in 2018 with the roster we had. And then Diego Rossi scores and we're like, oh my God, Sit back, hang on to your butts. We got a ball game. Same concept happens with Christian Torres. We need to make a 25th minute song about Christian Torres scoring a goal. LAFC's <laughs> never taken this approach by leaving the entire roster at home and utilizing the backups or the academy players mainly because we haven't really had academy players. I mean, we did, but they were called the Las Vegas Lights. The fact that they scored right off the bat, I I tweeted about it immediately, hoping that people who were on the fence about watching this game would come right in out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And this game did not disappoint. Christian Torres 
it only it only makes sense that one of the first homegrown signings that we ever had scores the first goal in this game. Absolutely fantastic ball movement. Sloppy passing by Monterey Bay FC, but we capitalize and we're up one to nil. Woohoo! Love it, love it, love it. And you know uh, what I really liked was I don't know. Just even leading up to that, I just was really enjoying watching their passing. Like they really were moving the ball well. I I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just so used to a lot of times I, just that level of soccer, just seeing it consistently intercepted and a lot of just back and forth. But they were really stringing together a lot of nice passes. And you know, I I was very impressed with what I saw. And you made a comment about how you tweeted it out so uh, you could catch the attention of people and and I hope it works because I saw comments prior to this game where people were like you know how do I watch it where do I watch it and people responding with doesn't matter it's it's LAFC too what you know like people <sighs> like literally I'm like whoa like you realize this is still your team right like ugh, I don't know it was frustrating actually so- playing under the LAFC banner so right get out yeah, yeah so, I like what you said though also about 2018 I'm actually wearing my 2018 uh playoff shirt right now Oh, look oh, at you. Oh, Nina, that I hope you don't give us give us bad luck because you remember who we lost in 2018, right? I know. I'm not going to give us and bad who are we luck. Playing on Saturday? Oh, calm down. You're fine. Real salty lake. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right. Moving on, we're not going to derail like the defenders normally do. In the 29th minute, we're going to see uh, Donner doing a great job causing some tension, uh, but it's broken up by the LAFC defense. Uh, Romero is going to get in there and break that up. And then in the 32nd minute, Murphy off the corner, a shot off the crossbar. I don't know how that didn't go in. Um, it was by Moby Fair. Man, what a close call. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. And you know, I, the yeah. announcers were giving him a hard time for hitting the ball too hard and like, oh, you just got to tap it in when you're there. And I, I kind of disagree with it. He mishit the ball. Yeah. And it hit off the crossbar. That's a little bit of an experience there. And it's definitely like a little bit of stress and tension getting to you. But if I'm in front of the goal, you nail that. You drive that thing home. Don't like soft tap it in there. No, he, because he like, he- mm. You soft tap it in and it gets saved because you have too much time to think about it. Then you're going to get criticized for not hitting the ball hard enough. So, dude, mm-hmm. let, let them hit it. I mean, you never know. I mean, sometimes those ricochets, you know, bounce just right, too. You know, they can hit off the crossbar and still find a way in. I mean, I've seen I've seen crazier things. So I'd rather at least hit it with some conviction or a little bit of mustard, if you will. And, uh, and, and you know, see what happens after that rather than, you know, trying to tap it in and feeling a little cheeky with your shot. So, absolutely and you know it's gonna be a dangerous call a couple of different times with Donner doing that job of his coming down the corner and you know I'm not gonna say we had much possession still I mean Christian pointed it out earlier we were definitely playing more on the defensive side the passes we were putting together were good but at the same time it was definitely nerve-wracking to be on the opposite side of the possession meter uh, moving through the game in the 34th minute, there was a free kick conceded by Monterey Bay, a uh, foul by Chrysostomo's LAFC's defense is going to actually have to find their shape and composure to maintain and hold this lead. And that's something that we really noticed within this team is our defensive four really stayed very narrow. They never got too far outside of, you know, in they definitely conceded the wings on the side. So that's how Donner was able to keep coming down, keep coming down. And we were staying very narrow and allowing those crosses in and then using our center four and probably the height of our keeper and (laughs) Noah to make sure that those didn't come in. Yeah. In the 36th minute, we're going to see Dixon take a shot. Uh, Donner made the run, but no one there. Eldon's easily able to scoop it up and we're lucky no one was around because that could have been a dangerous uh, position for them. And then in the 36th minute as well, there's going to be a shot by LAFC, but that one is saved by Siaha as well. And then in the 45th minute, we've got a yellow card won by LAFC. There was a foul right outside the box. It was won by Ordaz, which, uh, you know, he's got a little spiciness in him, I have to say. Uh, he uh, he knows how to kind of get into some heads, and he knows how to make those players react. 
and uh, just the right time, like when the Absolutely. refs looking. Uh, I <laughs> love this so much. Nathan Ordaz is the hot sauce on the field. He <laughs> is literally in everybody's heads. He's in the back of their throats. He is making them do things they wouldn't normally do. And I loved every second of it because anytime somebody would get mad, he would just casually stroll away like do, 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 do. I know. Oh, yeah. He's living rent free in so many people's heads tonight. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a big practitioner of the dark arts. And this is all, not going to be the first time that we're going to say a yellow card won by uh, essentially by Nathan Ordaz. I love the kid's tenacity. I love that he plays fearless. And he's so incredibly fast. When you see him on that open so run, fast. he's so stinking quick. So of, fast. I mean, I mean, the fourth, yes. the fourth uh, signed homegrown player. I mean, he was part of LAFC, like when he, as like a ten or an eleven year old. And here we see him, this young man hitting puberty, getting strong. It's just, it's just a joy <laughs> to see that uh, pissing off the likes of former LAFC player James Murphy. Uh, we get two minutes worth of injury time. Chrysostomo has a shot that deflects another corner for LAFC, but nothing really happens there. And we go into the halftime into the locker room of Cardinal Stadium in a really good position. Shots, each club had four a pop. On target, LAFC with two to Monterey Bay's one, which is crazy. But the possession, I hadn't really seen this. 70 to 30, Monterey Bay. LAFC just sitting back waiting for them to mess things up. And mess things up they did in that 25th minute. The passing accuracy, though, this was sort of a problem. This is something that needed to be addressed and fixed. Uh, certainly in the first half, it did not look good. Monterey Bay having their way with LAFC, 82% passing accuracy. LAFC an abysmal 64%, not able to string together too many passes. But it seems crazy because it, seems, of the it, time. it definitely didn't seem like they were, you know, miss, uh, like hitting the ball a lot. I mean, I, I felt like, I don't know. I, I, are you sure you wrote that stat right? <laughs> Well, I mean, you, it, it's it's off MLS, so, I mean, yeah, they, they can make the mistakes. But let's put it this way. They didn't have too many opportunities because at 30% possession, they only had so many opportunities to string together a couple of passes. So that I could suppose. be considered a statistic if you really break it down. But that's the statistics going into the locker room. Coming out, let's start. Let's talk about this intense second half. Yeah, let's yeah, the second it. half starts and nobody makes any subs at halftime which is interesting because we do know you could have some tired legs out there but they're all sticking with their starters this is also one of the windows that isn't counted towards substitution windows that goes unused by both teams in the 46th minute the ball slips and Velosky had a shot but that got blocked in the 47th minute Murphy entry to Dixon whose header gets right to Jakupovich yeah in the 52nd minute we're gonna get Jakupovich I know. Yeah, Kupovich. Yeah, Kupovich. I'm just going to call him Eldon. Eldon, just say Eldon. Eldon. It's going to be Eldon. There you go. We're just on a first Eldon name basis Elder. now. We're like oh. besties. What'd you the say? The great and wise Eldon the Elder, making him sound like he's Gandalf's brother. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. You so that's shall good. not pass. I mean, that could definitely work in his favor when he's speaking to the ball. You shall not pass. Ooh. Yeah, Anyways, 50, 52nd minute, we're going to get a bit of action that leads to a goal kick, and we're going to see Ordaz out there making some space, as he has uh, has been known to do in this game. And then in the 54th minute, Duenas has a shot from outside the box, but unfortunately it just misses uh, the box and nothing happens. Yeah, in the 57th minute, we got a little drama with a little contact in the box on both parties. There's no whistle, but everyone was definitely calling for a PK on the Monterey Bay side, and they were shouting at the referee. I could hear, like, ref, you suck. But it's a good no call as there is no contact in the box, but we heard the boos anyway. I mean, yeah, you saw the replay whenever they finally ran it back, and he literally just tripped on the crappy turf is, is what happened. He got uh, – Turf Monster got him. No one else <laughs> did. So you could yellow card the turf if you would like. I think it definitely deserves something. But thankfully, uh, nothing came from that, and he just kind of let him play on. It was kind of like one – fake foul for another kind of, you know, it looked like a retaliatory kind of a uh, slide tackle, but either way, nothing happened. And uh, we play on. 
Yeah, in the 57th minute, Martinez is able to get a cross into the box for the Union, but it is cleared by the defense. Donner tries with a far cross, and he's trying to put some plays together there, still coming down the corner, still putting those crosses in, but not finding the right home. And in the 62nd, the right knee of Eldon gets a save. <laughs> Ooh, save for the knee. I could I could definitely use a knee save. I could, I could use a new knee, period right now um <laughs> either way in the 63rd minute we've got some subs uh monterey bay is going to bring a coley in for dixon and we're going to move on to the 67th minute and we're going to have some great passing and great build up but siaha is there to save it and wow just wow on that play what a save of the game Ooh. so far i mean you go back and you remember this, and I, if you can find a way to go back and uh, and rewatch it, that certainly should have been goal number two. We have uh, Chris Ostomo with first pass in to Jaime, who connects with Ordaz, and uh, it was an amazing, amazing run that had an even better save. Yeah, in opportunities and games like this, we cannot be missing those chances, and that ends up building later. Fortunately, you know, I don't want to spoil or alert too much, but fortunately it doesn't end up really affecting the outcome of the game but a hundred percent those are the games and those are the shots you cannot miss yeah those are the things that can help shift momentum a little bit um it can get your team a little like jazzed up like that was like all right like nice save like okay and then you know they they, they kind of feel a little bit of that uh, momentum mm -hmm. shift to them so question for you both mm -hmm. this keeper for Union has a background in indoor soccer. How do you think that affected his ability to come out and block a shot being seeing as he's like in the six yard box, it's close distance. It's a heavy powered shot. And he's able to get to that in a way that most keepers probably wouldn't. How do you think his indoor background ex like affected him? I mean, I think positively first, I mean, I know so many times when we do PKs in indoor soccer, that space that they have, to, to try and score a goal, a goal on those run-ups as they do it is a very similar type of situation than you saw here where he's coming out and he's coming in. And like you said, the space he has is very narrow and it, it's, it, it has to only work in his favor to be able to defend such a small space. What do you <laughs> trying think? Trying to Christian? save a goal, trying to save a goal. I got another <laughs> confession. <laughs> Sorry. Oh and you said roll. Dave Grohl. I mean, I, I, honestly, Nina, if you really want to break it down, I don't think his indoor experience, Panda had a really great insight on that, but he didn't really have any indoor experience. That guy didn't play whatsoever. But he practiced. San Diego soccer. But he Certainly. did get, he got his tutelage under Boris Pardo and some really good keepers. Absolutely. In that San Diego soccer organization. But just to like facts are facts, Anthony Ziaha did not really spend too much time at the San Diego Soccers because upon signing, he ended up taking a different contract and going with the San Diego Loyal. But anytime you start to learn anything within the indoor game, the guy's big. You you, you learn how to handle ricochets and, and physics in a way that most keepers wouldn't have to worry about because, well, you're not utilizing boards. You're not seeing things come off of weird angles. And that mm -hmm. little background is going to give him somewhat of an advantage uh, when balls come off of other defenders ricocheting along those regards. So. Look, the kid being six foot six and athletic is also very helpful as well. I mean, he's a big, wide body with a huge wingspan. So all those things bold well in his favor. All right. Well, thank you for that little moment of, uh, of insight and great question, Nina. I mean, I, way to kind of pick that out and, uh, and use that. I, I love your, uh, your tactical brain in these situations. <laughs> I love your brain too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right. In the giggity minute, uh, Chrysostomo passes and it gets headed to Siaha. And then in the 70th minute, we are going to see an LAFC sub. We are going to. I thought it was a sun. Christian wrote that we got to see the sun. Oh, the well, sun. Well, I'm glad you're not out. reading this word for word because the word shot isn't exactly spelled like shot. We were not going to address the fact that you said someone took a shot and it got blocked but it wasn't try i know believe me i, I breeze what my over. autocorrect does <laughs> i breeze right that? over that typo for you because <laughs> this is a family-friendly podcast and we do not need to be talking about that kind of content uh, sun, however is family friendly and i really uh yeah the sun was not out it was actually getting very dark <laughs> at this point it was it was funny the game started in the daytime and then it definitely ended in the evening but uh what they say we were gonna get uh was it soccer after dark or whatever they yeah. called it 
And then they're like, it was uh, PKs. What do they call that? What What's later than dark? <laughs> uh, Dawn. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sunrise. Um, so we're going to see uh, Laji. It's, it's Male, right? I want to say oh, yeah. that correctly. Uh, Laje Male, he's going to come in and Suba is out. Um, he was a great player. He was great to watch and, uh, you know, and definitely want to keep an eye on him. And then in the 72nd minute, Male's taking a crack at it with Siaha off his line. Unfortunately, we're going to get an eye offside call by Ordaz anyways. Yeah. And then in the 73rd minute, Eldon ends up with the ball. But due to a replay, we didn't really see what exactly happened here. Um, <laughs> just the kinkiness well. going on and then in the, the camera the, yeah, the yeah, camera yeah, yeah. It's like somebody like some soccer mom or dad has their little like rca camcorder and they're filming the darn thing i will never talk badly about ca the cameraman and mls ever again not after what we witnessed at cardinal stadium that was uh <laughs> i felt like i could have done a better job on my iphone well next time we'll ship you out there so you can stream it for everyone Thank you. Well, the idea was to go up there and stay there, but we didn't. So we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, All right. City. <laughs> In the 74th yes, minute. A great Angel City game, by the way. Oh, that's something Anyways. we didn't do, the Angel City minute. We always do that on the show. It would be perfect for you all to do that. But if you want that, you should just plug in your pod. Maybe we can do that at the end. In the cool. 74th minute, a daughter – being a menace again, but thankfully there was no one there to connect with. And we're starting to see, like Nina had mentioned at the beginning of the pod, that, you know, he's this kid's a playmaker. He's definitely making things happen. He is in and around the ball a lot, mm -hmm. and a lot of things that are happening um, are, are coming by way of him. And he's fun to watch. He really was. And then, Christian, talk about what makes you cringe. <laughs> so what grinds your gears? goes by a couple of different names. One name in particular that made me cringe, uh, it was the chant of Let's Go Union. Obviously, you know, our, our rivals in Philadelphia, which by yeah, the and way. No one likes Philly. No. Everyone well, hates Philly. Philly's just really awful and should Philly be tied up sucks. in the closet. Philly, Philly needs to just, you know, go away. Philly hasn't been cool since the days of Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, I get it. I get <laughs> Anyways. it. Anyways. The chance, the chanting of a let's go union was certainly something to cringe about. <laughs> and speaking of the union and Kai Wagner, by the way, yet again, this is a team that ties the game late only to lose in PKs to Minnesota United. So three words for the faithful of the Philadelphia union. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, but I did cringe when they were doing the let's go union chant. Do you think anyway. that was deliberate? Do you think you they knew what they were doing with that? Or was it just... That's well, just that's what one they of their do. nicknames. I know it is one of their nicknames, but uh, I mean, the I wonder... What, like kelp? Like, how do you get kelp, union exactly. and kelp? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't uh, know. It's kelp. Hold on. There's a couple other ones. It's uh, crisp. Union, crisp and kelp. Crisp and kelp. That just sounds like a really good Kellogg cereal right there. I'm in the mood for cereal. Some... What, what was the name of that Fugazi... Um... Uh, di uh, dino fruit pebbles? rocks or whatever. It's like soft. dino. <laughs> oh, it was things. frosted. Yeah, but there was also frosted flakes that used um the cereal for the O. So I guess that's how they got through the <laughs> trademark because it wasn't. It was technically frosted flakes. Yeah, that's worst that, I, I, we, we should, second we worst grocery, grocery store ever. Photo. Yeah, second uh, worst the most grocery expensive store. grocery store ever. Oh, yeah. Nina's no longer allowed to pick grocery stores. Let's just yes. leave it at that. I don't know. The Trader Joe's, this we was when know, we were up in great. Northern California. When, we, when, we, when I was doing, we were doing the pod and I was in the middle of uh, East Jesus Nowhere, Timbuktu, and where the hell am yeah. I Avenue. That was the supermarket we were referencing, just in case you wanted to. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was awful in so many ways. They didn't have margarita mix. This yeah. is a true Defenders of the Bank podcast now because it's come off the rails. Bravo, oh, sorry. Ladies. All right, you're welcome. Let's... No, I love it. Thank you. Good job. You got us after 7 p.m. We're already asleep. Yeah, we we are technically slumbering now. This is uh, we we are sleep sleep potting right now. Um, all right, let's let's get through this because honestly, the good stuff hasn't even really happened yet. Like and we still so have much left. I know we got to go. All right, let's 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 get on back on this train and let's let's choo choo all the way to victory. Um, 79th minute, the kids. 
these kids, man, they are playing some great defense. They really are. And they've stopped all of Monterey's transitional runs. And they're just really, you know, you, you really are feeling it. You're like, oh, my gosh, they're going to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, you feel like they've got it in the bag. This is all they have to do is hold on. Um, and then we're going to see some subs from Monterey Bay. Enrique's is going to be out. And Maldonado is going to come in. And whew. I just want to know that. The minute Jesse Maldonado came into the game, that's that's essentially what changed the, the whole scope of it for Monterey. The subs yes. really made a big impact in this game, and you're going to find out why later. But the minute Maldonado came out on the pitch, Monterey Bay was a completely different and much more dangerous team. Yeah. yeah. In the 80th minute, we saw Duenas uh, pass it into Jaime, and he whiffed it and then hits it. And that was close. Not fully footed, but that was a second – Close call of the half. I thought it went in for a second. Like for a split second, I, I thought it was in. It was that close. And I don't know how he got just enough on it. And I think the uh, commentators even said, you know, if we could get a real good close up, that probably only missed by like, you know, like one or two feet, which is not that far in the grand scheme of things when you think about it. And oh man, we really, that, that ball right there would have just been so much for us in the rest of this game. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the 81st minute definitely had us all on their edge of our seats, though, with a near equalizer on a run from Maldonado. And we got really lucky because this was a super casual save that just dribbled outside by Eldon. And, you know, he's a little more experienced than that, and he should have definitely corralled that a little bit better. But fortunately, we were able to get through this. In the 83rd minute, Union get a free kick on the far right, and that's played in, but pushed out far for a throw in. And then the 85th minute, we see some more subs. Number 41, Avila checks in for Jaime. All right. And then we also have uh, another uh, big name that we're going to mention. Simon Dawkins is going to come in for the former LAFC player, James Murphy, which uh, real quick. I mean, did you see much from Murphy in this game? I mean, he's supposed to be. I forgot he was there. I, 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 he was not where my eye was going to, and I thought I was going to be paying more attention to him. He had a couple of nice passes and a couple of plays, but I mean, he started getting frustrated and started committing a lot of like foolish plays towards the end, which obviously Frank Yallop decided to sub him out. But the guy that they brought in, you know, Simon Dawkins, well, it's the gremlin rush party coming in here. Simon Dawkins is, is a no joke kind of a player, a former designated player within the rankings of major league soccer, 21 caps with the Jamaican national team started regularly for Tottenham Hotspur's reserve team. Played some time late in Orient, Derby County, Ipswich, but most of his career spent with the San Jose Earthquakes. Uh, Well, a couple of stints anyway. Great player, and again, a sub that would make a big difference. Yeah, he definitely is, and we'll get into that. But before that, in the 88th minute, we're going to see a misplay that gave Monterey Bay a look, but it was broken up by Rodriguez. Valeski was there, but it was right into Eldon's hands, and We can wipe our brows on that one because another close call. And, you know, when you start getting these kind of back-to-back close calls and you feel like they're knocking, like you start to get nervous. And rightfully so, because in the 90th minute, we're going to see Simon Dawkins, the sub, super sub at this point. He is going to tie this ball game up in the waning seconds of the game. I mean, we literally, I think we would have had to hold on for only four total minutes with stoppage time, and that would have been it. But he takes a shot low, nets it, Valeski gets the assist, and we have a tie ball game in the 90th minute before they even put up injury time. And ah, I think it just, you felt the air kind of get let out of a few tires on that one, don't you think? 110%. I, like... Already, I tell you guys, like bedtime is nine o'clock, and it's now midnight, and we're still recording. We're and, I, ever, by the way. <laughs> and I yeah. texted you guys, "This isn't fair. I don't have time for like I'm not awake enough for extra time or for PKs. And like if I have to stay up, we better win." <laughs> well, anger. Thank you for willing that into existence, Nina. Really appreciate that. We're going to get three minutes of injury time, and uh, we'll get a little action here in the 90 plus one. Uh, Chrysostomo is going to get a cross that leads to a header that gets saved, but again, we got an offside call, so it didn't matter anyways. Maldonado is going to take a shot and miss it wide, and then the whistle will blow, and we are set for 
bonus soccer people are we ready for this i hope you didn't get too cozy and take your melatonin too early seriously i hope you were at home and the bar didn't close on you because 30 more minutes of soccer and we don't get much of a break between some of these pieces uh in the 93rd minute as we just roll straight into this there's a set piece that comes off a header from fair and the ball goes right to eldon and dawkins is able to take that corner and then the 94th minute hey christian you want to do this one too yeah anger size is it the subs, yeah. the stinking the subs. subs. Jesse Maldonado, second goal of the game by a sub. First one coming by way of Simon Dawkins, who, by the way, on set pieces looked really good. Prior to Simon Dawkins, you had James Murphy taking a lot of those set pieces. And quite honestly, most of the set pieces, in particular the corners that were taken by Monterey Bay, garbage. Not to sound crass and rude and, and blunt, but they were just awful. Dawkins, different player uh, in there, but... You had great ball movement in by Monterey Bay. And there's uh, the 2015 MLS Combine MVP getting credited for another assist. Jesse Maldonado scores. And you want to talk about deflating at that point? All four tires were punctured at this point. Gut-wrenching. Absolutely gut-wrenching. But, you know, karma and the soccer gods have a funny way of punishing you. The Monterey Bay bench got booked for a yellow card for the excessive celebrating. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they felt like it was well worth it, though. I mean, that that moment, you know, to be up on an MLS team, regardless of who's actually playing, you know that you would have you would have went for that yellow, too. <laughs> Maybe. But in the grand I mean, scheme of things, it was an eight, pretty much an average age, 18 and a half year old Division three MLS next pro I, team. So they didn't no. wouldn't have slayed. They wouldn't have slayed Goliath had they walked out of this game with a victory. Let's just put it that way and set the context correctly. They would have. Sure, but the karma does have a way of biting them in the ass. I mean, as you guys were watching this, could anyone else hear like the voice of JR going, value the ball? (laughs) I don't think I've ever heard him say that. I don't think I've ever heard him say that. Does he say that, Nina? No, seriously. He shouts it nonstop when we're watching together. Well, you're with Maybe him down there. We can't really hear you. With you. Oh, that's like his big thing now. It's value the ball. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so the Monterey Bay bench, like you said, gets a yellow. And, uh, well, hey, the 100th minute, we've got <laughs> – Do I really? can I read what you wrote, Christian? Oh, no. No, it's family friendly. Just use your imagination of what the substituted word was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Everybody, I want you to enter in a word here that has a different vowel and just laugh with us because it's so hard to read these notes when these autocorrects happen without giggling like a 12-year-old boy. But in the 100th minute, Oakley with a shot saved by Eldon. And then we're going to see subs. Uh, we're going to Maya is going to come in for Romero. And yeah. We're going to see yeah, some, uh, some little Lisa. chippiness. You know, some more of that Ordaz uh, magic is going to happen in the 103rd Sorry. minute. You want to talk about that? <laughs> I love this so much, my little hot sauce. So Siaha actually is going to earn a yellow for a foul on Ordaz. It was like a nice little pushing action. And good on Ordaz because he, once again, draws the foul, draws the yellow card, and chases them into his web of mystery. And then just okay. calmly walks away like, yeah, no, I got you. And kind of, he kind of even looks at the uh, ref like, there it is. Pull, pull out the card. Get him. Book him. Yeah. You saw it. Well, you know, you <laughs> saw them both like as they're running towards the end line. Obviously, um, Siaha was trying to, you know, make sure, you know, he couldn't get to the ball so that it would be a goal kick. And, you know, they both went for it. And I mean, good on Ordaz. He didn't give up. He actually went up and tried to shove this giant out of the way. And in doing so, I think he falls down. And who knows what was said. I know Ordaz probably said something, and that triggered him. He walked over, and he just put, I mean, out in the middle of everybody. I mean, why would you do that? Why would you do that? If the foul wasn't enough from the way he, like, brought him to the ground, then you have to go and push him. Like, oh, come on. Right? Like, everything was fine. You should have just, like, you got the ball. Like, leave it alone. But anyways, thankfully, thankfully, in the 105th minute, we are going to see uh, Chris Ostomo who's going to get a great pass into the young 18-year-old Brazilian, Mateus Maia. Guess what? Another sub. 
What is going on? These subs are proving to be very, very valuable in this game. They're made very, uh, very tech or tactically uh, by our coaching staffs on both sides, mm -hmm. obviously. And we are tied the game up in the 105th minute. It is two to two. I think we're all losing our minds. We weren't all together, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure your reaction was probably the same as ours. I mean, our cats ran screaming into the other rooms. They could not handle the excitement. It was, I, I haven't seen them since actually. I think they gave up on us. <laughs> yeah, definitely exciting. Great to see this tied up. And we are now in 2-2 and the first segment of Extra Time has ended and at this point, no matter what happens, you know, I'm definitely proud of them. They've got such grit. They've got great tenacity. They've been looking great out on the pitch, but I want to win. If yeah, I'm, I'm staying up, I want to win. Absolutely. You're right. When you get into bonus soccer, it just feels better at the end because you don't want to do all this for nothing. And those boys really did fight. I think they were underestimated. I think they were overlooked. I think that they were taken for granted. Talk about not respecting the other team. I think they came in here thinking that they were going to walk all over our second team. And boy, did we show them that was not going to be the case because we are now into like a bonus, bonus, bonus soccer at this point. And, uh, you know, we've got us, we've got a question from Philly, please proceed. Not so much a question. I'm just eager to get to the fun stuff. Quite honestly, the second need, unless you have something different, the second frame of extra time, the second 15 minutes didn't really yield any results, nor were there really any like dangerous, ambitious play on goal. Yes. No, we no, just I had, a little I more hot sauce for Mordaz. Yeah, I think it's oh, important to, to point it. out. Oh, yes. Okay. I think it's very important to point out that, you know, Saucy Pants Ordaz over here, he draws another yellow card, and it comes by way of, I believe it was Fair. Is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe, believe so. It was Fair, who... Like he literally like, grabbed him and like threw him to the ground. Like, like it was not even like it was mm -hmm. very deliberate and he knew it. And that's going to be very important at the end of this when we get to the penalty kick. So take a mental note, yellow card, throws him to the ground. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, let's move on. Do you have anything you want to say before we just talk about these PKs? So we've got two keepers of varying experience. Eldon Yakupovic, who's been playing the game all across many countries and multiple continents, uh, had the opportunity to face 35 penalty kicks within his career, only saving six of them. Whereas the younger, bigger, wider winger spanned Anthony Ziaha, five penalty kicks in which he saved two. So obviously you're going to take Wider wingspan by what, one inch? That's still bigger. And I mean, in a game that's a matter of inches, that certainly comes into a, yeah, that certainly comes into effect. It certainly came into effect today, but just wanted to like do the backstory on that. So are you saying size on... matters? Apparently uh, well, you heard it here, folks. That's what we're referring to. <laughs> I, I don't know. You just said that, you know, the, the, it's the a matter bigger, of inches, the bigger size it is. Matters. It's a matter of inches. <laughs> size matters. Yes. So the bigger it is, the more successful you'll be. Is that what I heard? Um, the <laughs> I don't know how to say this. So I didn't get myself I'm just, in trouble. You know, I'm just trying to figure. This. Yeah, I'm just Look, trying to make sure I understand. PKs, no more innuendos when it's coming to penalty kicks where inches and millimeters do matter. Yeah, being a little wider helps. <laughs> this is what happens when you get chicks after dark. I just hope you know uh, now. <laughs> You've, you've well, heard hold it on. Here. Do I have two of you, or is there three? Um, oh, no. God. Listen, I want people to want to have us back on here, and if they know that I'm going to thwart off Hello Kitty for you, then they might ask us to come back. But there if I... love Hello Kitty. Chris Lafferty Ooh. loves Hello Kitty. The I scarf would, loves We love Hello Lafferty. Kitty. We love Lafferty and we love Scarf, so we, we do not want to do that to them or the millions. And millions. Exactly. All right. Can we get on to these PKs? Because I was so nervous, and I, I don't even know why. Like, going into this match, I was not nervous. I don't know if I was just like, you know, I'll, I'll be happy with, you know, just seeing how they play and stuff. But now I'm invested. Now I'm like, 
holy crap, these boys deserve this win. And, and I, I want that more for them than, than like the whole thing in general. Like I just want these guys to be able to leave this game, you know, feeling good about their performance tonight. And I feel like a win is just going to solidify that. So let's talk about this. I know uh, LAFC is going to be the first one to step up and take a shot. And it's going to be Maya who is going to convert on the first one. He is cool, calm, collective. It's 1-0. Yeah, and then, of course, we saw Union stepping up and Valeski. Eldon guessed the correct way, but unfortunately, he is late and Valeski scores his. 1-1. One, one. Now we're going to see Ordaz versus Siaha, which, you know, obviously that little shrubby shove situation. So you're like, who's going to win the ultimate battle in this? And thankfully for LAFC, it's going to be Ordaz, and I'm pretty sure he had something to say as he walked away as well because, well, he's your little spicy sauce. He's like your little, uh, you're like your little sriracha bottle out there. So we are 2-1 right now, and, and then Simon head. Dawkins steps up, and Eldon once again guesses correctly but unfortunately couldn't make the save. We are 2-2. Two -two. Yep. All right. Do you want to cover any of these, Philly, or are you just going to listen as we go? I'll cover one, and then I'll let you all do this. You're doing such a marvelous job. Hopefully, the uh, the millions. And, and millions. millions. Appreciate the uh, the insight and the comedy and the beautiful banter you all have brought in. I certainly enjoy it. Scarf, you're, you're missing out, but you know, you're know you sleeping right now, so can't really utilize you. Jealous. So, Danny Chrysostomo, Chrysostomo, at this point, look, I got to say, the kid was having a phenomenal game. An absolutely phenomenal game. He is an executioner on those set pieces. I got to say, anytime he had a corner kick or a free kick, he he somehow threaded it in past so many people. Unfortunately, there was nobody on the other side to convert. He had a great game up until this point. And, hey, sometimes things happen. Siaha, in this case, stuffs Daniel Chrysostomo, and that puts us in a really disadvantageous position. Yes, it does. So now we are... Two to two, but we've got a big X on our side now. So we're going to see Kai Green step up. He is the captain. He's got 176 USL caps. And, well, he's going to get Eldon. Very chill shot. Now Monterey Bay is up three to two. So, you know, we're starting to sweat a little bit. I don't know how you felt, but wasn't feeling great. Yeah, definitely starting to sweat, but Moyado kept us a little bit in the calmer cooler as he really drills it in great shot great spot 17 years old and he has that kind of composure yes so we are now three three and we're gonna see okoli is gonna be up he's gonna go for that fourth shot and try to put him up by one but we're gonna get a save by eldon on this one he is gonna get a hand on it he's gonna push it out and now we are level again three to three and now whew, you could feel just kind of like a big collective sigh all across LAFC land as we're like, okay, we're back in it. We're like square one now. All right. But then chaos erupts as Eldon goes to grab a ball. So the, the, I love what the announcer said. They thought that he was like, I don't know, doing something to like impede play in some way. And they were making him run on to the other side, but no, that is not what he was doing at all. Was he Nina? Not at all. He was stepping up to take a shot. How many he times? He also didn't do you waste any that? time, too, man. He slammed the absolute stitches right out of that. I mean, that was the best looking corner kick at uh, corner kick. That was the best looking penalty kick uh, of them all. It was just he blasted the hell out of it. Yeah, it was top bins, too. It's one of those shots that no, I don't know any keeper that would have saved it, honestly. I mean, it was just, it, it's in that impossible spot that came with mm -hmm. such, such vigor and tenacity and where it was at. It, it's just, Unless you're standing there already and know where it's at, it's going to be hard. And, you know, you love that kind of confidence from a keeper like that because they don't get to do that very often. I don't know how many times you've seen it where they've taken it and not taking it out of necessity of needing a shot because I've seen them have to take it once they've ran through all of their, you know, actual like strikers and midfields and defenders. And then they're like, okay, now the keeper's got to shoot. But for him to be the, what the, he was number uh, four or five, I guess, right? Five, we, put, we, we, we went up can't four. count anymore. I know. It's I, after I, midnight. Can't count. Well, yeah, we don't need to count. But either way, we're up four to three. And we're going to go. Boone is up and he scores and ties it up. It is four, four. So we're heading to the sixth person. We've had five people up 
One has missed on each side. Four, four. We're in number six. We and now it's going to go one and one, one and one, one and one until we get a winner. And fortunately, we didn't have to one and one too much. Rosales steps up for LAFC and he scores. And then drum roll, please. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have a button that's a drum roll, but um, I drummed it. It's fine. We're well, going to get, as we had mentioned, hope you took that mental note. Moby Fair, he's going to step up. And I remember saying, man. I kind of hope karma kicks him in the butt because I remember what you did to Ordaz. It's time to kind of pay your penance. And he does by way of an Elden save that is going to seal the deal, win the game. And I mean, I don't know how you guys felt, but it was, it was chaos. Um, it was excitement. It was elation. It was relief. It was proud. I think is another word that I, I just, I just felt so proud of these guys. And I don't know, Christian, tell us a little bit about, uh, about what you felt in that moment. Tell us well, about I your mean, feelings. And emotions. Karma, instantly I'm thinking uh, a, a, a culture, the, uh, Oh my God, what's their name? Karma, 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 chameleon. Well, it's more like karma, 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 mm -hmm. Elden whooped your ass. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what that was. Karma whooped your ass, Moby. Moby, nobody likes Moby. Wasn't that like a line from a Slim Shady song? Regardless, yes. I, I'm so stinking happy. Look, even if they would have not come out of the PK successfully, or even out of the extra time successfully, I was still beyond proud of these young men. Not having been able to, to win a game within MLS Next doesn't even matter anymore. What they did today was massive. And I'll say that in club history, this should go down as one of the best games in club history because it shows everybody out there how far our academy has come. How many teams are going to go out there and put an entire team of an academy players to go up against a veteran USL squad? Not many. Steve Chirondolo probably had everybody at Monterey Bay uh, competing and practicing for the likes of the Carlos Velas and the Denny Buangas. Because with LAFC being the defending MLS Cup champions, they're going to uh, inspire the best out of every single team. And then when you're playing mental chess, for them to go out onto the pitch and not see the Denny Buangas, the Carlos Velas, or anybody of that nature, Monterey Bay probably got a little inflated with their ego and thought, we're going to whoop up these young boys. And after they went and scored in the 25th minute off of an error, that took the wind out of their sails. They obviously mustered and muscled their way back into this game. But LAFC, too, stuck together with tenacity, with grit. And quite honestly, ha having Eldon Yakupovich there was fantastic. You needed that veteran presence there and the, uh, the insight that he had to offer. But I'm so unbelievably stinking proud of these young men and everybody out there who's a member and a lover of the black and gold tip your hat off to these boys and the way to show them your love and appreciation quite honestly go check them out on the campus of cal state fulton hit up an lafc2 match i challenge each and every one of you if you love this club go to one lafc2 game at the very least and show these boys your love and appreciation because what they did today was massive in the history of this club massive for a third division team to go out there and beat a second division team the way they did after going up after blowing the lead coming back and winning in pks my hats off to you young gentlemen you know one thing real quick we'll just paint the picture for you guys just to kind of see how this game kind of rounded out and what they look like on the stat lines they both teams had 13 shots uh, LAFC had six on target. Monterey had seven, nine corners to eight. I'm not, it doesn't matter who had what. They were so evenly matched, except when it came to fouls. We had 22 to their 10. So we were playing a very <laughs> physical an game. And, I, and I, I, I love that. I mean, they had three yellow cards, though, Monterey Bay. And you know they were all three by way of uh, Nathan Ordaz. <laughs> love it. Love it. He drew all three of those fouls, so he's out there doing the Lord's work, and we uh, we love him for that. Um, but obviously, we know how this ended: five to four on PKs, and they will be advancing on to the next round. Do you know what the next round looks like for Colorado LAFC in the in Open Cup? Colorado right. in two weeks. They beat Sac Republic four to two, I believe. 
I think so. I mean, that's what I remember seeing it as. So I wasn't sure who was on our next bracket. So that should be uh, that should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited. I I have no idea what we're gonna see. I know uh, I know Scarf is pretty hell bent on letting the young ones ride and and just mm -hmm. letting them keep going. I mean, I saw somebody out there who's like, let the young ones handle Open Cup. We'll focus on CCL and MLS. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Christian, correct me. Don't they have to do a redraw? No, they they play they play Colorado in the next round. When do we draw again? Well, they had like they had the regionals already done. So in our little area was us in Monterey, in Colorado, and Sac Republic. So the winner of those matches go on to play each other. So it's Colorado in two weeks. And if I'm wrong, which I I'm ninety nine percent sure I'm not. There's always that one percent shot of being wrong, and I have no problem admitting I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that that's how it's going to be. Okay. Well, we'll definitely talk about that well in advance before that. So you kind of want to tune in to obviously Defenders of the Bank. Make sure you like and subscribe to them everywhere. And, you know, if you are entertained by us and you want to know a little bit more about Angel City, where's it at? See, got it on here. If you want to hear a little more about what we have to say about our games or like if you don't make it out to the games, but you want to follow them, obviously you want to uh, tune into our podcast. We do it the exact same way, pretty much um, YouTube or any podcast platform that you do uh, like to listen to your podcast on. So we would love it if you would come on over and, uh, and hang out with us as well. I mean, we're, I think we're pretty entertaining. I don't know. I'd like to think so. I have fun. But I of course, we also need to thank the Defenders of the Bank sponsor, of course, Flex. Flex Power Tools, a proud sponsor of Defenders of the Bank and everything that they do there. And we also, by association, do here. So thank you, Flex, for sponsoring this and all things Defenders of the Bank. Make sure you hit them up for all your power tool needs. All right. Does anybody Flex, have any final... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do not hit Philly up for your power tool needs. He will look at you like you have five heads. Now, if you want to hit hey. Philly with a power tool, that can be arranged. Hey, we're not oh, we're man. not trying to promote violence on this podcast. Thank you very much. We are, we are not a Toronto capo. We are not throwing stuff oh my at people. God, that was nuts. Not throwing megaphones at people? You are not throwing megaphones well, at people. Hmm. Uh yeah. They already put a statement out about that and condemned the actions. But oh, anyway. Um, anything else? I mean, again, proud of our boys. So excited. Honestly, I, uh, I had faith going into this just cause I had no reason not to. I mean, why not? Like, I think they're, I think they're good. I think they proved it to everybody and uh, hopefully they, they, uh, maybe shut a few people up who were, uh, not very kind out there. Absolutely. And you know how we like to sign off here at defenders of the bank. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Jump for Elliot.